My name is Jason, and this is Just Watches. All right, today we have the Islander ISL66 here on the left. This is the samurai-esque Islander watch from Long Island Watches, which they were nice enough to lend into the channel for review. If you're not familiar with Long Island Watch, I'm going to link to my review of the ISL21 because I talk a little bit about the brand in the intro to that video. I recently picked up a King Samurai on the right, and while I was happy Seiko is finally making a Samurai with a Sapphire Crystal and Ceramic Bezel insert, I mentioned in the review of that watch, if you are okay with a microband, you can get these features for a lot less than Seiko's asking MSRP of $625, although they can be purchased for around $450 on eBay at the time of this recording. So I really wanted to review the ISL66 for that reason, and one other reason as well. You see, while it shares the same style of the case, as the Samurai, the Islander watch is actually smaller, and while I love the design of the Samurai, it is a large watch for me personally. So let's get into the review of this watch, and then tune in next week when I'll be comparing the ISL66 directly to this King Samurai SRP E33. As always, we're going to do specifications, pros, cons, and then if I think this watch is worth the money. But before we begin, I've been keeping track of uh, the percentage of my reviews that come from subscribers, and it's slowly been creeping up, but we're still stuck at around 7%. So if you're enjoying the content of this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, I would love if you would do so. Let's see if we can get to 8%. So starting with the case, it is 42 millimeters if you take it from the shortest point up here to about there, but keep in mind parts of the case do jut out a little bit further. It's 48 millimeters lug to lug, uh, but also keep in mind that the end links, they do sit a little bit proud of the case, so it makes it more of about a 52 millimeter true lug to lug. It's 14 millimeters thick on the case, and then you have about a millimeter, maybe even a millimeter and a half of that double domed sapphire crystal, and then the lug width here is 20 millimeters. The case is primarily brushed. You do have a few areas of high polish there between the two very distinct angular samurai-esque lugs, which are pierced for easy strap changes. Keep that in mind. And then you do have high polish kind of around the edge of that bezel. And then the crown itself is high polish as well. Mostly all brushed though on the case. And note here, the integration of the bracelet is very good. You have super consistent brushing from the case to the end link of the bracelet, and then it's also very flush and fits very well with the case. So it's even better integration than on the actual Seiko Samurai. Now the bracelet is very chunky, and look at these really cool links. I love the choice of links here. They really match the overall style of the case with that angular design. You then continues into the bracelet, you have these very angular lugs. They're all brushed on the top, they're high polished on the side. It starts at 22 millimeters and then tapers down to 18 millimeters. To this unsigned clasp, it does have a safety catch, and then it's double push deployment to a very nice milled scissor. It does have three micro positions, so you should be able to get a good fit. And then for sizing, it does utilize screw links, which I love to see. It makes sizing very easy. I had this sized up in just a matter of minutes. And then you have solid end links. The links are solid. And then overall, it's just a very robust bracelet. But keep in mind, because this is such a nice heavy bracelet, that the overall weight of the watch on my wrist, my wrist is six and three quarters inch, so I took out four links. It's a whopping 190 grams. So it is a very solid watch. And because of that, it is quite heavy. On the case back, we do have a screw in case back, which is going to help with that 200 meters of water resistance. You have a nice picture of Long Island there, Sapphire, Island Watch, and then Islander. So this is powered by the Seiko NH36. That's going to be a 21,600 vibration per hour hacking and hand winding movement with a power reserve of about 41 hours and a stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40, but we will get it on the time grapher later. This also has a quick set day and date feature. The 7mm screw down crown is easy to operate despite the crown guards. The top of the crown is high polished and nicely signed with the Islander logo, which is etched into the crown. And then the screw down action is smooth. So I absolutely love this crystal. First of all, it's sapphire, which I like to see, very scratch resistant. And it's double domed, which is fun. And it has an AR coating, something I'd like to see on every watch. It just makes the dial so much easier to read and see. But look at this massive facet that goes all the way around the edge of the crystal. And it's, this crystal is very large. It's sticking out probably like a millimeter to a millimeter and a half proud of the bezel there. And it just it is a really cool overall effect. It catches the light in interesting ways and then does some cool distortions there around the edge. You can see at the six o'clock position with the indices. And then being sapphire, you know, normally I'd be a little bit worried about a crystal this proud of the bezel, but it's a sapphire crystal. I'm not really worried it's gonna pick up scratches. And speaking of not picking up scratches, we have a 120 click bezel with a ceramic insert. So that's also gonna be highly scratch resistant. And then wait, why is there no bezel pip there at the 12 o'clock position? Well, that's because this 
bezel is fully loomed, so you'll see that in the loom shot. The action is smooth and consistent throughout, and the fact that I can operate it under the camera this easily is a really good sign. And good news, everything is properly aligned. Now the color on this dial is, is beautiful. It's this burgundy, maybe it's like a wine red. So it's playful because it's red, but it's not obnoxious. It's not overly bright or in your face. And then it has this really great sunburst effect. You can see it catching with the studio lights there. And then minimal text on the dial. You have the Islander logo at 12 o'clock, automatic in 206, and then the date and date at the three. So for the indices, they are applied and they're edged in stainless steel. And then there's a different indice at 12 and then there's a, a different indice at six and nine. So in combination with the day date, it makes it very easy to orientate the watch. And then look at the chapter ring. The color match is almost perfect. Now, obviously they're two different materials. So color matching the chapter ring to the dial can be very difficult, but it's very good here. The hands are kind of your typical Seiko style. You have that long, arrow minute hand and then a syringe style hour hand. I do like to note that this minute hand is very long. One of my pet peeves is a short minute hand, but it's reaching all the way out and clearly pointing to those minute dashes on the chapter ring. And then the second hand has that lollipop counterbalance. The hands are completely flat. They are filled with loom and they have a high polish finish. For loom, we're gonna put it up against the Seiko King Samurai. And you can see here, both bright and responsive loom. Uh, I think they're about on par to begin with. I love that loomed bezel. It really kind of brings it above and beyond. The Seiko does hold on a little bit longer and it's just a little bit brighter, but excellent loom overall on the Islander. So it's always a little bit of a luck of the draw with these Seiko movements. They have a really wide stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40. I've always gotten better than that. I have had a few out at the edge, but in my own personal experience, they run much closer to plus or minus 10 seconds. And this one is hovering between about plus two and plus seven per day with zero beat error. So it's a good result. So here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. First of all, check the way the bracelet plays with the light. It's really cool. It kind of catches it on all the different angles of the links. And then this is, as we said in the beginning, 42 millimeters, 48 millimeters lug to lug. So technically it is smaller than the Seiko Samurai, but this watch has a lot of presence. So it does wear on the bigger end of the 42 millimeter. You can see the lugs, you know, they're really angular. The case is quite wide there. So just keep in mind, it is 42 millimeters. I do think I pull it off on my six and three quarters inch wrist, but this watch has a lot of presence on wrist. So pros and cons, starting with the pros. Well, as with most of the Islander lineup, you're getting all the specs that are frequently desired. You have a sapphire crystal with air coating, a loomed ceramic bezel insert, hacking, hand winding, solid end links, solid links with screws for sizing and a milled scissor clasp. If you are looking for your watches to be fully specced out, there's basically nothing missing here. Secondly, this is a great bracelet with very angular links, and I think it matches the style of the Samurai case much better than the one Seiko actually uses, which is way more curvy. And then third, the loom, as you can see, it's bright and responsive, and I think it's pretty much on par with Seiko. The Seiko held on a little bit longer, but you know, in day-to-day -day practice, you will notice the loom on this watch. It is bright and responsive. While technically this watch is smaller than the Samurai, the sheer weight of it at 190 grams, due in part to that very robust bracelet, doesn't make it feel like a very smaller watch. I suppose with this bold case design, small isn't a feeling it's going to exude, but I was secretly hoping it would feel smaller, and while it's technically smaller, it has a ton of wrist presence. This this isn't bad per se, it's just not exactly what I might have been expecting. So is this watch worth the money? Well, we talked about this in the King Samurai view, and we're going to talk about it next week when we compare these two head-to-head, -head, but at $299, you're getting all the specs you could possibly want. Sure, I think the only thing that might be missing is ISO certified, but this is a solidly constructed watch, and I'm pretty confident it would get the job done if you're actually going to dive with it. And then the only other con I could think of with this watch is that it is a micro brand and the designs are heavily inspired by Seiko. But in my humble opinion, Seiko is never going to give us watches this well spec at this price point ever again. Their overall strategy seems set on going up market. And if that leaves a hole in market share, I'm happy to see Islander Watch or any other brand gobble that up. So for many of us, the problem isn't whether or not we should get an Islander, it's which one of the many choices we should pick from. And I'm excited to see where this brand goes and what the future might hold. So there you guys have it, the Islander ISL66. Let me know what you think about this watch in the comments below. As always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you have been watching Just Watches.